Good morning, everyone. We welcome everybody who's physically present here in church, as well as everybody who's watching from home via our live stream. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, and our celebrant for this Mass is Father Dennis, assisted by Deacon Fred. You can find our worship aid on our Facebook page, on our website, or by scanning the QR code at the entrance of the church with your phone. Please stand. Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, brothers and sisters. And once again, welcome to our Eucharistic celebration as we give thanks today for the many blessings that we receive from God as a faith community. We also welcome those who are, who are participating in their homes in our live stream mass. And likewise, we welcome Erica and Helen as they make their uh, first scrutiny today. And we offer this mass for the intention of Anne, Anne and Edward McGovern. Likewise, we include our personal intentions today. And let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our saints. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you at the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. 
In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbors. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor nothing else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, 
Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of the cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold the doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While Jesus was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, they began to believe in his name, and they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus did not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need to anyone to testify about his human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dear friends, this third Sunday of Lent, the Word of God opens us to the real understanding of the temple of God, the place where we worship God, the place where we encounter God, the place where we welcome God. During the time of Jesus, the temple is a very significant place. It was the center of the life of the lives of the Jewish people. It was the most important place in Israel, in Jerusalem. After the Israelites worshiped God in the desert and in the mountain, God commanded King David 
to build a house for him. It was, however, during the time of King Solomon that finally they were able to build a house for God that they called the temple. As I've said, the temple has been the center of their lives. And some said the temple of Jerusalem is one of the wonders of the world because of its magnificent beauty. The temple is the place where they worship God, place where they offered sacrifices to God. In today's gospel, Jesus, like any other Jews, went to the temple. He was not happy with what he saw in the temple. He found the temple turned into a marketplace. And so Jesus drove them out of the temple. His disciples recalled the words of the scripture, seal with the, your house will consume me. The first temple built by King Solomon was destroyed by the Babylonian Empire. And so they built the second temple. And it was also destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. In Jerusalem today, you will find the remnant of the second temple. And we know it now as the Wailing Wall. My dear friends, in our gospel today, what is to be noted is the beautiful dialogue, the beautiful confrontation with Jesus and the Jews. This was after Jesus drove the manu changers and those who were selling animals out of the temple. Jesus says, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The profound meaning of these words would only become clear after Jesus' death and resurrection. As the gospel says, he was speaking about the temple of his body. Jesus will die, and on the third day, he will be raised. The temple of his body will be destroyed, but after three days, it will be raised. My dear friends, Jesus was already speaking and instituting a new understanding of a new temple founded on his death and resurrection. And yes, Jesus is the cornerstone of the temple of the new temple of God, the church. And since we are the church, we are the temple of God. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, said, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? and that God's Spirit dwells in you. For God's temple is holy, and that you are the temple. My dear friends, this Sunday, let us again invite Jesus to enter into our temples. Let us once more cleanse ourselves let us once more purify ourselves 
for whatever hinders us to meaningfully encounter God in our lives. Cleanse our temples with all imperfections created by sin. Make a whip of cords and drive out in our hearts all the stains that keep us away from loving God, that keep us away from loving our brothers and sisters, our neighbor. Purify the temple that is our body and make it pleasing to God. Make it a perfect dwelling place, a perfect temple for God. God bless us all. I would, not li uh, I would like to uh, invite the, commun uh, the uh, catechumens to please come forward. Elect of God, please kneel down and pray. Let us pray for the select whom the church has confidently chosen. May they successfully complete their long preparation and at the Paschal Feast find Christ and his sacrament. That they may founder the word of God in their hearts and savor its meaning more fully day by day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that they may learn to know Christ, who came to save what, what was lost. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may humbly confess themselves to be sinners. Let us pray to the Lord. That they may sincerely reject everything in their lives that is displeasing and contrary to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit, who searches every heart, may help them to overcome their weakness. Through his power, let us pray to the Lord. That the same Holy Spirit may teach them to know the things of God and how to please him, let us pray to the Lord. That their families also may put their hope in Christ and find peace and holiness in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Now, Erica and Helen, please receive the creed from the church. Please stand. Erica and Helen, together with the community, we will profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us praise our loving Redeemer, who came for us this season of grace, and pray for him, saying, Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, let us visit to the people of Iraq, who will encourage and strengthen them under persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer for the commitment in the, to the gospel, especially those living in countries where they cannot worship freely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of human lives from the moment of conception to natural death and from the end of the culture of death in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, especially Antoinette Diesso and all the sick in our faith community, that they may be healed in body and soul. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Suzanne James, they be cleansed from all their sins and so entered your glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Anna and Edward McGovern, to whom this mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those special prayers we hold in the silence of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have taught us to overcome our sins by prayer, fasting, and works of mercy. When we are discouraged by our weakness, give us confidence in your love. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, today we have a second collection for the repair of the church. On your way out, just put them on the baskets and thank you for your generosity. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with the sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, to Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our simple pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you and your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, to the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, us we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us ready to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who had fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who had peace you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And I share with one another some sign. On you stay, we told his pecata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we told his pecata mundi, miserere away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and bear us up within your peaceful world. I has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those who love him. Let us pray. As we receive the floods of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true confession through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today and also those who are joining with us and they're in your homes through live stream mass. Thank, thank you, Deacon Fred, for uh, uh, being our deacon in our mass today. Thanks, Diane and Joe, for proclaiming the word. Thanks, Steve, for the music and the Alvano sisters. Thank you for serving today. Our novena to St. Joseph will begin this Thursday, March 11, at 7 p.m. Details are on the flyer in the bulletin. We'll have a variety of priests leading the prayers each evening, and all are invited. Also, the entire novena will be live streamed, making your participation much easier. Stations of the cross on Friday will have to be moved because of the novena. So on Friday, March 12 and March 19 only, the stations will be prayed at 3 p.m. We remind you that next Sunday at 12 noon, Mass will be offered for the repose of the soul of Sister Barbara Howard, known and loved by so many of you. 
we continue to make progress with the annual appeal of the Archdiocese. And we thank all who are already participated. We do need wider participation in order to reach our goal, which is something we must do. Now is the time to make a gift of any size. This will help our parish directly. Please take a red printed envelope from the doors or pews and help our parish to be successful and second to none. All parents are welcome to our praying parents holy hour this Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. And lectors are needed for our Holy Week celebration. There's a sign-up sheet in, in, the rec, in the sacristy. Thank you so much. Please stand. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday to all. Thank you so much.